Hi, I'm Danielle Gilbert. Thank you for joining me here today on eCountryLifestyle.com where I'm going to show you how to make two different kinds of skewers and a green side. Our green side today is going to be a wilted spinach and arugula with pancetta. Kind of like a salad, just a wilted mixed greens that you could serve on the side of anything really. But it complements these two skewers really well. The first skewer that we're going to do is a swordfish skewer with basil, pancetta, and lemon. Pancetta is just an Italian bacon. It comes from the same part of the little piggy, but um, it's not smoked like American bacon. So it has a little bit different flavor. Our next skewer is going to be really simple, really easy, and this is one of my favorite things ever to do for entertaining. I like to call them artichoke tulips because we're just going to slide artichoke hearts that we've marinated onto skewers and grill them up, and we're going to present them in a vase so it actually looks like a vase of tulips. So why don't we get started? I have these three beautiful swordfish steaks right here. And um, the reason that I'm using swordfish is because I think that it stands up really well to the grill. It's um, a pretty hearty fish. It doesn't fall apart very easily, so that makes it really easy to skewer and grill up. So what I did there was just um, cut off one of the fatty ends here. I'll do the same thing right now. You see this strip right here. We're just going to get rid of that. And this is a lot of food here. I think that I would consider this party food. This is enough to feed six to eight people. If you're having a cocktail party or just some friends over for poker night or something like that, it's a really quick and easy way to feed everybody. So what we're going to do now is just cut these swordfish steaks into bite-sized chunks. And uh, these are what we're going to skewer. We're actually going to marinate them for a little while, so I'm going to drop them in this bowl, and I'll show you what we're going to put in there in just a sec. All right, so the way that we're going to marinate these swordfish steaks is very simple. We're going to use a little garlic, of course, just a couple little cloves. Just give them a whack, get that skin off pretty easily. Half the work's done for you if you do it that way. See, it's all cracked and smashed. and You want to let these marinate as long as you can, you know, up to, up to a couple hours before serving them. Um, about 30 minutes at the minimum will do just fine, though. Don't be afraid to take your time when you're chopping, guys, too. I didn't learn how to do this overnight, so <laughs> just follow my lead. You'll be just fine. All right, we've got enough garlic here to marinate our swordfish. We're just going to drop that into the bowl. Along with about a tablespoon of coarse kosher salt and some freshly cracked black pepper. We're also going to put about two tablespoons of olive oil in here. Just let it kind of soak into the fish. That will not only help keep it moist on the grill, but it will prevent it from sticking on the grill. All right, next we are going to put the juice and zest of a lemon in here. Remember to roll your lemon before you squeeze it so you can get all the juices out. And if you prefer, you could certainly just pop this in the microwave for about 10 seconds. You'll get the same effect there. So we're just going to use our microplane zester and just take the skin off of this lemon and make sure guys not to take too much off of it you just want to give it one nice stroke don't go too far into this white part here that's where the skin starts to get bitter when you are using your microplane grater that you've got a whole bunch of stuff back here you've worked so hard for it don't waste it so just scrape it off with your finger make sure that you get it in there with the fish and now we're just going to cut our lemon in half and marinate it. Don't worry about the seeds because we're actually going to pull all the swordfish out of here and skewer it. So if any of the seeds get in the bowl, it's no big deal. They're not going to. All right, let's just give these a nice toss. Don't be afraid to use your hands as long as they're clean. Your hands are really the best tool that you've got in the kitchen. All right, now that we have our swordfish marinating for those skewers, we're going to go ahead and cut up some pancetta for our wilted spinach and arugula. Um, I've just got some fairly thickly sliced pancetta here. That way it's, it's more like bacon, you know, it's thick cut that way and we can cut them into chunks and we can actually have pieces that we'll take out. And uh, we're actually going to use the renderings from the pancetta to help wilt the arugula and spinach. So let's just start by cutting these into strips. So yeah, just go ahead and give them a little turn right here. And uh, it's all bi one big piece, so you can just keep on going like that. We're just going to dice these up into little pieces 
And, you know, really you could keep them bigger if you want, but I like to do them small because they're bite size and they kind of shrink up and they get nice and crisp. They cook a lot faster too. So for the sake of time, we'll stick with these. So I'm going to go ahead and take the cutting board with me over here to this skillet that I have preheated over medium. We're just going to turn it down just a little bit and we're going to hit it with just a little bit of olive oil, maybe about a tablespoon or so. So just go ahead and dump your pancetta in the pan. And the pancetta, like I said, is an Italian bacon. It is not smoked, but it is salted, so you really don't need to season this at all unless you want to put some pepper in there. But we'll go ahead and season the greens later on as we go. We're going to transfer them to this paper towel to allow all the excess fat to drain off. We're going to start getting all of the spinach and arugula into the pan. I'm going to show you how to skewer up these swordfish skewers redundant, isn't it? Uh, speaking of skewers, these are wooden, so I've gone ahead and soaked these in water for a couple hours to make sure that they don't burn on the grill. You know, using a, a grill pan like this, it's not so bad. It's not as imperative that they're in water so long, but certainly if you're on a propane or charcoal grill where there's actually flames coming up, um, you just don't want to torch these because then you'll end up with like little swordfish nub skewers. <laughs> It'd be harder for your guests to hold them and actually munch on them. So uh, what we're going to do here is um, we're going to place some torn basil in between each piece of swordfish. We'll probably do, you know, three or four pieces of swordfish per skewer. It just all depends on how many people you're entertaining and uh, how many skewers you want everybody to have. So why don't we just stick with four for now and see how that goes. So I'm just tearing this basil. And, you know, the reason that you would tear the basil in this situation instead of um, slice it or cut it or julienne or chiffonade it is because the basil um, bruises really easily. So if you're going to run a knife through it, um, the, the ends, like where you cut it, right here and right here, would get kind of dark. And uh, we just want to keep that green, verdant color alive. So that should be enough for now. Let's go ahead and get a couple pieces of swordfish on our skewer. So we're going to get a basil leaf in between each one, remember. And if you're not a huge fan of basil, you can omit this if you'd like, but uh, I happen to like it quite a lot. I think it adds a very fresh Italian flavor to the skewers. So now we've got um, five pieces of swordfish on each skewer. And uh, what we're going to do now is take this pancetta, and this is different pancetta than what I had in the pan, obviously. This is thin sliced pancetta. And uh, sometimes you can get these in packages in the deli, or sometimes you have to ask the butcher to cut it. But um, anyway, it just kind of like falls apart like this if you tear it. So what we're going to do is just kind of take a couple pieces and wrap it around and kind of nestle it in between the, uh, the swordfish. So you see how I'm just kind of trying to uh, loosely tear it, kind of where the, uh, the fat is. And you can get a fairly long piece if you're doing it the right way. And uh, that one is all done. We're going to go ahead and set this one aside and keep on doing these. All right, I'll show you how to do this pancetta one more time. Just kind of weave it in and out through the swordfish. And if you tear it, no problem. Just tuck it right in there and grab another piece. No big deal. And uh, you'll know that these are done on the grill when the pancetta has cooked and the swordfish has those grill marks that we love so much on it. Swordfish can be fairly rare, but you just want to make sure that the, uh, the pork is cooked. So these are crisping up really well. I see how they've kind of shrunk up a little bit and they've become a little bit more soft around the edges. All right, so our pancetta has browned up nicely. It's nice and crisp. So we are going to use a slotted spoon here and get it out of the oil, kind of shaking the excess off and getting it on to a paper towel to soak up all the additional grease. And we've got an awful lot of olive oil in there and uh, renderings from the pancetta to help us wilt our spinach and arugula. All right, now when you're putting something that is mostly comprised of water, such as spinach or arugula, into hot oil, you might want to stand back a little bit because it is going to kind of spit and crackle at you. So let's start with a handful of spinach.